Let's now turn our attention to scheduling. How appointments are scheduled under the Mission Act will be critical to your understanding in terms of how veterans will seek care under the new law. We'll start by taking a closer look at the process. As illustrated earlier in the presentation, the process begins with the veterans VA provider working with the veteran to determine his or her need for community care and eligibility under the new criteria. The veteran contacts the VA Medical Center where he or she receives primary care, after which a review of eligibility for community care begins. If the veteran chooses to get care in the community, VA staff will send a consult or referral to the VA Office of Community Care, or OCC, at the local VA Medical Center. Once the OCC receives the referral, community care is authorized, and the veteran receives notice within 48 hours. One of two options is made available to the veteran once care is authorized by the OCC. Either the veterans can schedule an appointment, or the OCC will schedule the appointment based on the veteran's preferences. The OCC will then coordinate the care and provide all necessary paperwork to the community provider. It will be the community provider's responsibility to ensure all medical records related to the authorized care are sent back to the OCC for placement in the veteran's VA medical records. Many veterans will only need one appointment to address a medical concern. In some instances, however, a veteran's community care provider will recommend follow-up care after the initial appointment. This authorization must be granted through the Request for Services process. This graphic outlines the steps taken in those instances where a request for services is submitted for additional care in the community. The community provider starts by submitting the request and medical justification to the OCC. The OCC receives the request. The OCC staff consults with medical experts to determine the clinical merits of the request. If the VA Medical Center can provide the follow-up treatment, a consult will be submitted to the VA Medical Center on behalf of the veteran. And the veteran will receive the care in the VA. However, if the VA Medical Center cannot provide the service, a consult for community care will be submitted on behalf of the veteran to the OCC. The OCC will receive the referral and schedule an appointment for community on behalf of the veteran. As you can see, the VA Medical Center's Office of Community Care plays a critical part in care coordination. There are two key tools used by VA Medical Centers for determining eligibility. The computerized patient record system that contains veteran medical records and the new decision support tool. The decision support tool will automate and streamline eligibility determinations along with the computerized patient record system for VA staff, as well as enable VA providers to determine whether a veteran meets certain eligibilities for community care in real time. An example of the electronic interface of the decision support tool is shown here. While veterans are unlikely to see the decision support tool in their individual cases, it helps to be aware of how the VA decides who is eligible for care, how and why. Let's now go through how it's used. This fictional veteran has a consult for podiatry, which is considered specialty care. An assessment of eligibility 
for community care is undertaken based on the previously discussed six criteria. Average drive and wait times at other VA facilities that can provide the needed treatment are a part of that assessment. The decision support tool may not be available at every VA medical facility on June 6, 2019. In those cases, VA staff will be able to check static eligibility using the computerized patient record system and other tools to make the assessment. There is no way to guarantee every veteran will fully understand all aspects of VA Mission Act eligibility and access standards, especially when dealing with these complexities in the midst of addressing healthcare concerns. For that reason, it will be important to have an understanding of the process for disputes related to denied eligibility for care and authorization for certain treatments. Under the VA Mission Act, any review of community care eligibility is subject to VA's clinical appeals process. There are two types of appeals that are reviewed under the process. Appeals related to initial eligibility determination follow the expedited 72-hour process. Appeals related to the aforementioned request for services follow the normal appeals process. This appeal takes longer because it requires consultation with medical expert, experts and review of patient treatment records, which differ from veteran to veteran and can get very complex depending on the circumstances. This flowchart outlines the appeals review process. An appeal can be initiated by a veteran by contacting the VA Medical Center's Patient Advocate Office. Because clinical appeals are not always handled consistently from facility to facility, veterans are also encouraged to contact an accredited veteran service organization, such as AMVETS, to get advice and guidance on how to pursue a clinical appeal. 